What? Okay, there's nothing in the rules saying that you have to show up to a class trial. I mean, he does force you to go, but he comes and gets you. He wouldn't punish you for not showing up. He just comes and brings you to the trial. Yeah, I'm just saying, what's going to happen if Kyoko's alive? If Kyoko is still alive, what happens to her if she doesn't show up? Nothing? Here's he the would bad. go and look for her. She might have gotten... Have certain articles hang out to dry. I better not look inside. That is really not something you should be concerned about right now. You fucking prude. There's something on the table. It's a wooden block decoration. What? What's that? What purpose does it serve? I think it's probably a key. The lockers on those, at those really traditional public bathhouses, use them for their lockers. I wouldn't know I've never gone to a public bathhouse. That doesn't really surprise me. It's hard to picture Byakuyan doing something like that. But if it is a key, I think I might know what it unlocks. Really? What? Hmm. Unless I'm mistaken, I'm pretty sure I saw something in the dojo that this might go to. The dojo. Correct. By the way, Gabe, I saw somebody point it out, but in the dojo, you know how they have the cherry blossom tree? Mm-hmm. Do you remember what the Japanese name Sakura. for the cherry blossom trees are? Sakura. Yeah, yes. so... They said that she made it to the dojo, even though, you know, she didn't. So oh, that's I cute. thought I, like that. I thought during the last episode, that was the joke you made. I thought that's why you were saying she would have loved it here, and I was just looking up the soccer trees, and I guess she would have. I, I wasn't even no, just talking about the I dojo. I she would have loved it there because it was a dojo. Oh, okay. I misunderstood. Yeah. I thought it was a joke. Never mind. Okay. Well then, I believe her work here is finished. Let's move on. I'm pretty sure there are other places in need of investigation. I should find out if Key and the dojo really are connected. Well, are you coming? It's that thing I checked out last episode. If they wouldn't block walkers here, they use woodwalk keys and... Da, 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 yeah. Alright, Makoto, do you see the walker farthest to the right? That's the only one that doesn't have a key in it at the moment. You understand what that means, right? The moment you open this up, Kyoko's gonna fall out. She's passed out drunk. She got fucked up last night. I should yeah. probably use the key we found at the locker, right? right? Well, just try it. Okay. I took out the wooden block and center it in the metal... Yeah, okay. The locker eagerly accepted the key and it opened. There are arrows in here and it looks like ten arrows in total. They look like they're made of titanium, which means they're quite strong despite how thin they are. Of course, without a bow, there's nothing there's nothing only but strong little sticks. Strong sticks. Oh, there's something else inside the locker. It's a wood, wadded up ball of duct tape. I wonder what that was used for. Is that a blood stain? If it is, then that means it surely must be related to the case. This duct tape is related to the case somehow. How could it possibly be involved? I think that's all the walker has to offer for now. Is something wrong? Very it's very odd, don't you think? The walker was hiding items that were clearly avoid the case, but how did the key to the walker wind up in the victim's room? Why? Or perhaps... Byakya? Hmm. Forget it. Come on, we need to continue on to the next location. Huh? What next location? What? There's still something we need to look into. We need to do more research on Fenrir, so we're going back to that one room. Got it. Fenrir, you mean the mercenary group that Mikuru was a part of? But how are we supposed to find out more about that? Isn't it obvious? We're in the school. Would, where in the school would you go to do research on something? Research. Are you talking about the archive? That's right. The archive has all kind of info that the general public doesn't have access to. Let's go. We only have so much time before the trial begins. Let's hurry. I believe there was a file related to Fenrir somewhere over here. Bakion seemed to know the archive like the back of his hand and went straight to a shelf in the back. Ah, hmm. uh, here we go. He quickly returned with the file in his hand. Take a look at this. Take a look at this! Um, I have no idea what it says. What language is this? How do you make it all the way to high school without learning a single word of French? Shut up, Cassie. <laughs> Shut up, Cassie. Parlez-vous français? Fuck off, Cassie. I don't want French, you French fuck. I'm pretty sure most high scorers can't speak French. Yeah, Cassie. 
Well, whatever, I'll read it for you, but I expect you to repay your debt a hundred times over. A hundred times? Isn't that kind of extreme? Fenrir is an elite fighting unit based out of the Middle East. Unlike military contractors, they are a fierce group of soldiers who engage in direct combat. They claim that a single member is equivalent to an entire company of regular soldiers. Just like Fenrir, the Wolf of Ragnarok, their mere presence is enough to strike fear into any enemy. They have been involved in countless military battles and operations, most of which are highly classified. However, some time ago they completely ceased all activity. At present, their continued existence cannot be confirmed. There are unconfirmed reports that the key members of the group were all neutralized. Rumors indicate they were killed to keep them from revealing this many, the many state secrets they had acquired. Or they were all killed by Mikuri Kasaba, 16th student, hiding somewhere in the school. The ultimate despair. Watch out. Some, however, believe that there was mounting, they were mounting an international tension with the group and they simply imploded. What, what is it? This all just sounds some like some kind of alternate reality. Hmm. Well, it isn't. This is our reality, the only reality. These people are part of our world. Hint, hint, this is all alternate reality bullshit. <laughs> Their battlefields aren't much different from our lives here. An unpredictable, unimaginable world. That's what makes it all so exciting. Exciting definitely isn't the word I would use. So, did anything jump out at you? This may be your last opportunity to learn about Fenrir. Now that you mention it, the report says something about where the name Fenrir comes from, right? That's right, it said Fenrir is the Wolf of Ragnarok. Speaking of which, would you like to know something interesting relating to that? To show that there are members of the team, each soldier that, soldier that joins the squad would get a tattoo representing Fenrir somewhere on their body. What? They got a tattoo of Fenrir? Could that mean... Mikuri Kusaba's profile has been updated. Dong, bing, bong. Time is utterly silent, and yet it constantly assaults us. Organisms, the Earth, natural phenomena. It damages us little by little until the end. You should really think about that. This is new. Anyway, it's time to begin the class trial. Are they always different casts? No. Okay. So, please meet up in the usual spot. <laughs> See you later. So, Monokuma's personality has changed quite a bit. Okay. Which would make me give a single question. Is what? there someone different controlling Monokuma now? Who? No. Was Monokuma originally controlled by Mikuri Kasaba, 16th student in somewhere in the school, the ultimate despair, watch out. Uh, and if so, who is now controlling? Would it be Kyoko? Or would it be the Mastermind? Probably not Kyoko. Who? No. Probably the Mastermind. The time has come. All we can do now is uncover the truth during the class trial. Right. It would seem that way. Let's go. Um, if Cassie is not... If Cassie's not being a lying dick about this, this is the second to last chapter. We're nearing the end. My ideal is that we'll finish the class trial. Hopefully. I mean, probably, considering I normally do the entire class trial in one go. Hmm. Whoa. Oh. I was really confused when I didn't see Byaku in the room. Whoa, Byaku and Makoto showed up together. Where the heck have you two been? You just disappeared without a word. We were investigating, of course. How could you not figure that out by this point? Give Makoto Kirankai enough for you guys to go off together. Are you into There's a lot of BL of Makoto yeah, in them. Yeah, I was about I was about to ask, isn't she super into BL? No, she hates it. Genesis uh, Jack likes it. Oh, okay, right. Jack likes it, she hates it. She's a degradee and all that. Um Yeah. Okay, so I I have one Also, I've been highly ranked before. It didn't turn out well for me. They tried to uh they, they, they killed someone, literally the next day. 
This is not good. Biakion, don't go murdering. I mean, Celeste didn't highly rank you. I she was... said you were C rank. I, no, I went up to B rank, and I was the like only person who ever made it up to B rank, or one of the only ones who ever did. I don't know if you went to B rank. I thought you just went to C. I, I thought we were at C rank, and then at the final thing she no, said... No, we were at D rank when we started, yes, I think. I thought that we went up to C rank, and then the last one made us up to B rank. I th thought she was, I thought that's why she said, like, you're the only one, or something like that. I don't know. I don't remember. Bitch is dead. Let's move on. <laughs> we, we, you know... We mourned her. She's gone. What? Are you jealous? Or are you making up some kind of creepy fantasy for yourself? What? Stop talking, brace yourselves. He'll be here any second. Any second. He could show up any time. Did... Did Hero just move? I'm gonna figure that I just imagined that, but for some reason I thought his sprite just moved. When I imagined what that was about to happen, I immediately tensed up and prepared myself, but he never came. We stood there for five full minutes, waiting for something weird to happen, and then five minutes became ten. Why? What's going on? Why hasn't Monokuma shown up yet? Could it be... Maybe he died again. Hmm. What should we do? What should oh, we yours. do? Should we keep waiting here, or...? <laughs> or what? <laughs> Jesus! Did I scare you? Come on. Demand an explanation. Why do you waste my time and make me wait like that? Hmm? What? I made you wait? You've got it all backwards. You're the ones making me wait. Huh? In other words, I'm waiting for everyone to arrive. We can't start till everyone's here, now can we? Who hmm? are you talking about? Everyone ain't here. We've all been waiting for you. <laughs> Sorry, but you're wrong. But I've been waiting 10 minutes now, so it's okay if I punish the one making us all wait, right? If we all agree it's a violation, I'll arrange punishment right now. Read it. And weep. If it's me you're waiting for, I'm here. When we heard that voice, we all spun around to look. <laughs> what up, Biddy? I'm here, and no rules have been broken. I checked the rules. It's not a violation not to show up. Yeah, but Monokuma would probably just add that rule. Yeah, he would have to add the rule, though, and then he would have to warn the person. No, Kyoko. he wouldn't. He could just add the rule. I mean, at any point previously, he where he had rules, he said, if you do this in the next ten seconds, you're fucked. So I would imagine he would just make an announcement. Yeah, but if they did it before, he still would have. Kyoko, you're still alive? No, that's a ghost! Fuck here. Yeah, I'm talking. If you want to fight, do another class trial. You need to save some of the fun for later, right? What? But it's okay that is it okay that there's no particular penalty for being late? Is that right? I made it here just fine. What school regulation did I violate? Am I wrong? You're so selfish, so spoiled. You're right. There's no penalty officially, but I bet you'll be sorry later. I'll make sure you're sorry later. Anyway, hustle your butts onto the elevator. I'll be just one step ahead of ya. See, this is my exact point though, Gabe. I noticed this. In the first chapter, he talks to us through the monitor. But literally every chapter after that, he just comes into the room. Yep. Why did he bother with that in the first chapter? Was it just, was he just doing that extra? Yeah. Uh, a better question, why doesn't he do that in every chapter after? Because really, he has to come all the way here or he gets to just sit in a comfy chair. When Okuna was gone, we all rushed up to Kyoko. I mean, he's a robot. I don't think comfort really means much to him. I, I think it means everything. Kyoko. Ah. So you really didn't die? Indeed. Of course I didn't die. <laughs> Thank God, I'm so glad you're okay. Perhaps, but that's not necessarily a good thing for us. Huh? He's right, now we gotta deal with a ghost! Hero, can you stab yourself in the head with a knife? I killed you to stop talking. Let's go. Come on, let's just go. Whatever we need to discuss, we can do it during the trial. Without ever looking directly at Kyoko, Byakuen stepped into the elevator. Mac, you're away from me. Good call. Who knows what happened to us if we take too long? 
I'll be happy when this trial is over. Yeah, I'm sure. One after another, everyone piled into the elevator. But I... I couldn't help myself. I had to talk to Hiroko before the trial started. Hey, what up, waifu? Listen, before we get started, I have to ask you. Where have you been this whole time? You used that key of yours to go somewhere, didn't you? So... Correct. I went to investigate the second floor of the dorm. The second floor? That's right. There aren't any monitors or cameras up there, so I was able to avoid Monokuma completely. Of course, I also missed his announcement because of that. <sighs> I had no idea a body had been discovered. Then when did you find out? So... Just now, I finished my shirt search and came back down just in time to hear the class trial announcement. I took some time to go over the crime scene first. I can't go into a trial completely uninformed, can I? So that's why you're late. However, I'm sorry I kept you all waiting. But if you were on the second floor of the dorms, then that's where the key you found goes to? Wrong. Actually, to be precise, not quite. In other words, I used Monokuma's secret tool which can open any lock in the school. Dabs, as I called it. <laughs> what? Kyoko's account has been added to the truth board section. Hey! What are you two doing? Hurry up before we get in trouble with Monokuma! Makoto. We can go over the details after we get through this trial, okay, Makoto? Right now, I just want to focus on surviving our current situation. It would seem because this is probably the single most crucial moment so far for me. For her? That's a strange way to put it. A class trial is important for everyone, right? So why would she say it's a crucial moment for her? Goodbye. Well, if that's all. Seemingly unconcerned, Kyoko made her way to the elevator. I'm just overthinking what she said, right? I mean, that could mean one of two things. Either she's the killer and, you know, this would be very important for her. Or... You know, there's something revealed by this trial that will matter very heavily. Being the last one left, I stepped into the elevator. Because I'm lame! And the door slid shut. Look at how few people we have left now. This time, the clunking was loud enough to hurt my ears, and the dread began to consume me once again. I can't imagine ever getting used to the mental pressure that comes with preparing for an execution. In that dusky darkness, no one said a word. We just stood there silent and still. After an immeasurable period of time, the doors opened without warning. A dazzling light penetrated every depth of my eyes. But it wasn't the illuminating light of hope. It was the illuminating light of despair. It's the blinding light of despair, whatever. I can't wait. Ew. I can't wait. I've been waiting for this. Feels like forever since we got together like this. The time for pointless jokes and jabs has passed. Oh, Let's get on with the show. You? Ew, that room. And so the curtain opened for the fifth time. A deadly judgment, a deadly deception, a deadly betrayal, a deadly riddle, a deadly defense, a deadly faith, a deadly, deadly class trial. Set skills. I don't think we have any new ones. Oh wait, extraordinary focus. <laughs> extraordinary? Right. We got that from Owie. Extraordinary, extraordinary. yeah. Chris yeah. focus is by two. Oh. What? Oh, I don't, um... It's... Uh, wow, we already had a better one. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that sucks. Oh, that really yeah. sucks. Well, alright, let's go. That's total crap. Rip a rony. Okay, I don't think you'll really need to go over things. This has all been one recording, so it should be fine. Yeah. Let's begin with a basic expl- If you can figure an aisle pun- Okay, well, I'll leave the rest up to you. Well then, let's discuss the specifics of the victim. First, we need to clarify who exactly the unidentified victim is. It's Kyoko. There's no other explanation. Dude, I hate if you. you don't shut the fuck I up. I hate you. You're so stupid. I hate you. But Kyoko's standing right there. No, that's a ghost! But she has legs and stuff. <laughs> That's the issue. That is 
That is a compelling argument, Hina. <laughs> you got it. Just because seems like the latest evolution in ghost technology. She's Gengar. Ridiculousness I can tolerate. Um, okay. So I just have to prove that the corpse isn't Kyoko, right? Then let's compare Kyoko's traits to the traits of the dead body. Her traits? Yeah, like her sizes. The corpse had much smaller titties. Piercing glare. Gloves, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I got it. I'm talking about her gloves. They'll give us some insight into the mystery. I'm sure of it. In that case, I think it would be helpful if someone explained why she actually wears those gloves. Someone. You were there when Monokuma told us. In fact, Monokuma told me. Yeah. Apparently, you have scars on your hands you don't want anyone to see. Oh. You know. Now that I think about it, the corpse wasn't wearing any gloves, right? They probably just got burnt up in the explosion. I'm not convinced. The ghost is just trying to fool us all. There's no way the corpse is Kyoko, but if I can't prove that, we're gonna be stuck here in the case when we move forward. Because, you know, every- Literally just because Hero's a fucking idiot. We don't need to even accept Hero's anything. We can just move on without him. It doesn't have to be unanimous. It just has to be a majority, right? Uh, yeah. So I don't have any choice but to spin around in circles. <laughs> I just like to imagine we're just running around in circles. Fragments near the bed, dead body exploded mm -hmm. in the fake nails tattoo in the right hand. That Kyoko there is just a ghost. Impossible. Okay, then prove it. Prove she's not a ghost. The dead body wasn't wearing gloves. They got burnt up in the explosion. I'm a ghost, interesting. Explosion. <laughs> well, yeah, she must have been wearing gloves. Cause that corpse is absolutely Kyoko. This entire discussion is idiotic. <sighs> yeah, why are we even giving him the time of day? You got that wrong. No, there's no way the corpse was wearing gloves. Whoever it was, they were wearing fake nails, remember? I imagine trying to wear gloves over nails like that would have been a pretty big pain. Besides, Kyoko wears gloves to hide her hands, right? It'd be pretty weird for someone who's self-conscious about their hands to wear fake nails, don't you think? Jeez, man, you don't know women, huh? They're complicated like that. Oh my god, hero. I don't think you know women either. Yeah. No, Makoto has a basic level of understanding, like any person does. No, I mean hero. No, I know that. I'm, I'm saying that to hero. Well, Kyoko, any thoughts? These gloves were custom made to the size of my hands to make sure they don't interfere with my daily life. If I wore fake nails, the gloves wouldn't fit properly. Then that's that. The dead body doesn't belong to Kyoko. Which should have been obvious since she's standing right here. I hate that I completely agree with Byakuya. <laughs> okay, so then, who's the real victim? First, we need to figure that out. That's the first we thing we already know. Said. You're the one who's been dragging us around in circles. Or anything we have to identify the victim. Everything starts from there. God, the hero is just... Ugh. Kyoko really is still alive. Then who died? There's gotta be some way to figure it out. I don't think so. The face was scorched beyond recognition, and there wasn't any description in the Monokuma file. Oh, if we can't identify the body... Then there's nothing else we can do, right? Um... If Kyoko really is still alive, then who died? There's gotta be some... I don't think so. The face was... and there wasn't any description in the Monokuma... Oh, if we can't identify... You got that wrong. No, it's wrong. Easy. There was Lemon. one Squid. clue left behind that we can use to identify the body. What? For real? For real? If you're lying, you 
For Rizzle? My Nizzle? Why is Toko so hating on me? This I, gotta see. I, I hate him. She's just being stupid. Ignore them, Makoto. Tell us what you're talking about. The key to figuring out who it was is the tattoo on the back of her hand. Oh, yeah. The design's pretty strange, huh? Is this a dog? Hina gets me. No, it's a wolf. You must have made her get it to be like, you're my bitch. <laughs> Uh, they really did something that humiliating? That sounds like Choco. No, I'm Choco. The identity of the victim is hidden within that tattoo. A bitch. Oh, really? Compare the tattoo to other information we have. The victim's identity should be clear. I got it. You're welcome. The Fenrir Mercenary Corps. That's the name of the military group Mukuro Ikusaba belonged to. Okay, so to show that they're a member of the team, each soldier that joins the squad would get a tattoo representing Fenrir somewhere on their body. Fenrir? The image that represents Fenrir is... I have to come up with this? Whoa, bitch. Whoa. Wow, my game just lagged. Now I understand. My game just lagged really badly during that. The representation of Fenrir is a wolf. Fenrir, the wolf of Ragnarok. It's from Norse mythology. A huge world-ending wolf beast. He's the child the eight of the tears arm. And a female giant. Man. After all this time, we finally yes. got a glimpse of the literary all-star. A wolf tattoo. And that means... Exactly. The body we found had a tattoo of a wolf. Which means that person must have once belonged to Fenrir. So it must I mean, I feel like wolf. people that don't belong to Fenrir can get wolf tattoos. True, but... Kind of like how that guy in the beginning of Hunter x Hunter got the... Got the spider tattoo on him, even though he wasn't a spider. Spoilers? What? <gasps> Spoilers! It's literally in the, the first season. And that shows from 2011. <laughs> Actually, the original show is from the 90s, so it's almost- it's like 25 years old or something. Too chip. Too chip. Indeed, the trial this time is to solve the murder of Mukuro Ikusaba! The sixteenth student is hidden somewhere. Lying hidden somewhere in the school, known as the ultimate despair. Watch out for her. No, it means we were wrong in thinking that Mukuro was the mastermind at all. But I mean, being the ultimate despair seems like a pretty mastermindy title to me. Maybe we shouldn't have been thinking of her as the ultimate despair in the first place. After all, looking at her profile, I didn't see anything that would fit such a description. All it said was that she was the ultimate soldier. If I remember correctly, that other information came from Kyoko. That's what you told Makoto, right? So that means Kyoko got it wrong. You got that wrong! Um, who was she? Who was Mukuro Ikusaba? She's been gone Mukuro Ikusaba, you just answered the question. When she finally turns up, she gets killed. Usually when there's a scene where an important character dies, it has a lot more detail. Yeah. So you're saying she wasn't an important character? Which would mean she was the same as us. Just another participant. Then, who's the real mastermind? It must have been the Hope's Peak Academy headmaster after all. No, the headmaster has nothing to do with it. But how can we trust that? We already know your information about Mukuro was wrong. My information was not wrong. She had two titles. Okay, okay! We're in the middle of a trial right now! Figuring out who killed Mukuro is first and foremost! Please limit all future prattle, chatter, and chit-chat as much as possible! Fine. Uncovering the identity of the Mastermind will have to wait. But remember this. No matter what happens, we will find out who you really are. I stake my family name on it. I 
have officially decided to completely ignore all such attempts at provocation. Good. Now then, just so nobody's confused, let me state this one more time for the record. The reason we're having a class trial is because a murder among the students has taken place. Hammer that point straight into your big old brains! What you're saying is that both the victim and the culprit are part of the student body? Then... one of us killed Muguro? Wait, no! There's a chance that there's some mystery 17th person who's been hiding all along! God, I hate that. Nope! There are only 16 students in total that have been taking part in these events! Seriously? Then... one of us killed Mukuro? Who did it? Who's the killer this time? Get a hold of yourself. We've already narrowed down the list of possible suspects. It's down to two people according to you. Huh? I'm sure you realize who I'm talking about, right, Makoto? Who the evidence points to? Based on evidence, man, there can be two suspects. I got it! You've narrowed it down to Yoko and me, right? Why do you say that? Allow me to explain. Just after nighttime last night, I went to the garden, so I can confirm that at that point, there was no dead body there. You got that wrong! So, the murder must have taken place after I left the garden. However, Hiro, Toko, Hina, and I were in the gym the entire time. The gym? That's right. The four of us were there trying to dismantle Monokuma. The whole time, we were very careful not to go anywhere alone. We even went to the bathroom in pairs. All of which is to say, the four of us all have alibis. The only ones without alibis... ...are me and Makoto. That's why you're able to narrow down the list of suspects. Exactly so. Um... I have something I'd like to say regarding the whole alibi thing. Are you thinking of raising an objection? Well, before that... I just want to try and get a better idea of what time the murder took place. Doing that might reveal some kind of clue. Whatever you want, somebody go ahead and help him out. Me and Byakuya can both confirm that the body wasn't in the garden at... Well, it was after nighttime for sure. I'd say it must have been around 10 o'clock. So the murder must have happened after 10 p.m. Not necessarily. That's just when the body got there. Then I guess we can say the time frame for the murder was between then and when we found the body? Oh, but what time did we find the body? The one who saw the body first was Toko, right? And she went to go get the pickaxe. At 9? I got it! The body must have been discovered at 9 a.m., since that's when Toko went to get the pickaxe. He's right. It had to be around then. So we can be totally sure the murder happened sometime between 10 at night and 9 in the morning. For me, I was already asleep before nighttime hit. So I don't have an alibi after 10 o'clock. But I'm sure I met up with everyone else before 9 this morning. We ran into each other in the dining hall, right? That was around... Oh yeah! Right around 7.30. I remember checking right before I went in. So I'm totally sure about it. Which means from 10 p.m. to 7.30 a.m., you don't have an alibi. The murder happens somewhere between 10 p.m. and 9 a.m., and I still have an alibi from 10 p.m. to 7.30. Okay, then it looks like the game has begun. If I can't prove... If I can't provide an alibi for that period, then I just have to prove the murder didn't happen during the time I don't have an alibi. Make your argument. We've established a time frame for the murder. It took place somewhere between 10 o'clock at night and 9 o'clock in the morning. Yep, and Makoto doesn't have an alibi for most of that time. Yeah, from 10 o'clock to 7.30. That's more than enough time to commit murder, I should think. So Makoto, if you have any objections, now would be the time. Okay, so I guess 7.30 would be the sprinklers. Got it. 
We've established a talk that took place somewhere between 9 o'clock in the morning. Yep. And Makoto doesn't have enough. Nope. Yeah, from 10 o'clock to 7 30. Oh, no, I was wrong. Damn. That's when the sprinklers happen, so We've not that. For the it took place somewhere between 10 o'clock at night and 9 o'clock in the morning. Yep, and the cook. Yeah, from 7 30. No. Shoot. I probably don't know what I'm looking for here. We've established the only two things are times. It took place somewhere between sure. At night. No. I'm literally just guessing. Shoot. Not receiving any help here. Yeah, I didn't remember what it was. Time frame uh. It took place somewhere between 10 o'clock at so night. So the, the. Okay. I'll tell you what truth bullet you're using. Yeah? It's sprinklers. And Makoto doesn't have an right. alibi for most of that time. Huh? Yeah, that's more than enough time, so Makoto, if you have any... So it literally is the 10 o'clock at night. Got it. We've established a time frame for the murder. It took place somewhere between... No, that's okay, I thought it'd be the 7.30, but you know, sure, whatever. Go off, I guess. Actually, the murder couldn't have happened anywhere near 10 o'clock. It had to have taken place way later. And what makes you say that? Because of the sprinklers in the garden. The sprinklers are set to go off right at 7.30 every morning, right? So if the body had been in the garden before 7.30, then it should have been completely soaked. Okay, my thing should have worked then, at 7.30. Oh, hold on. I remember this part. Well, the whole point is that you're saying it couldn't have happened at 10. Yeah. You would have agreed with him that, or, well, agreed with Hina well, that I... it would have happened around 7.30, but that's not in the game. You start being able to agree with people next game. Okay, this is the same problem I had with Phoenix Wright when I played. Or at least what I've played of Phoenix Wright. I've never finished a game. Dripping wet, in fact. Sorry, Toko, but you're wrong. I'm wrong? How? Are you saying only the mouth down south was wet? How dare you spew such indecent words? No, so, of course, he's good. saying that the body was wet, but not because of the sprinklers. What do you mean by denying the sprinkler? Are you trying to deny my entire existence? Man, you're totally wacko. If you really think it wasn't the sprinkler, you'd better tell us why! Just, okay, and that should do it. Simple evidence. Truth bullets. No, I guess. I admit no, I'm panic I talk action. You. No, no, no! I don't know anything! Hold on! Are you trying to blame me? I admit nothing. I hate you! No, no, no! I don't know anything! Hold on! Are you trying to blame me? I admit nothing. Are you trying to blame me? I admit nothing. I hate you. No, no, no! How can you say it wasn't the sprinkler? Sure. This should prove it. Defaulted to the right one, so sure. Just remember what the body was like after the explosion. And you'll see why it wasn't the sprinklers. The top half of the body was wet, yes. But the bottom half was completely dry. If the sprinklers got the body wet, shouldn't the whole body have been wet? Except the tarp that we found. So they only got the top wet? The bottom was completely dry? What a brutal maniac! I'm so sick of her. Let's just move on the reason only the top half was wet was because while the body was still on fire i doused it with water but only the part on fire the top half oh then i guess the sprinklers really didn't do it 
So if the sprinklers didn't get the body wet, then the murder must have taken place sometime after the sprinklers turned on at 7.30 in the morning. Except no, because once again, a tarp. Which means she must have been killed sometime between then and when the body was discovered at 9. But Makoto's alibi was only missing from 10 o'clock last night to 7.30 this morning, right? So there's no way Makoto could have done it. I guess you had an alibi after all. Good for you. In which case, the only one left without an alibi is Kyoko. Kyoko's the only one without an alibi, which would mean that Mikura's killer is no way refused to believe it. Kyoko murdered someone that's... I'd just like to say one thing. If you vote for me, and I die here, the mystery of this school will stay hidden forever. Which is why I can't let that happen. Huh? So are you saying you're not the culprit? Of course I'm not. I have no reason to kill anyone. This is a trap the mastermind has laid for us. A trap? <laughs> We're this far into the game and now you decide to blame me? Stop wasting time! Stop wasting energy! You really think your little trick is gonna work? Shut up, you! You got it, boss! Shutting up now! Anyway... Kyoko, you actually did have a reason to kill her. Huh? She did? She thought Mukuro was the ultimate despair. In other words, the mastermind behind everything. So she killed her to try and put a stop to all this. Isn't that right, Kyoko? Yeah. But you made one catastrophic mistake. Mukuro wasn't the mastermind at all. And as a result, we were forced into another trial. Something I'm sure you weren't at all expecting. So, that was her motive? If she had a motive, and no alibi, well then, I think it's pretty clear Kyoko's gotta be the culprit. I'm not the only one without an alibi. Makoto's explanation is still insufficient. Huh? The sprinklers didn't get the body wet, but that doesn't mean the murder happened when he said it did. What are you- Because you see, there is a way the body could have avoided getting wet. Interesting. I'm listening. She's right. All it would take is covering the body with a certain something to keep it from getting wet. A tarp. I got it. You're talking about the tarp, aren't you? You catch on quick. You're right. All you'd have to do is cover the body with the tarp. And that'd take care of the water. In fact, that's exactly what the killer did. The dirt pattern on the tarp can attest to that. Only one side of the tarp got dirty, because that's the side that got covered in water. The side that faced down over the body, meanwhile, kept perfectly clean. This proves that the killer used the tarp to keep the body from getting soaked. But why would they go to all that effort just to keep the body from getting wet? Most likely so they could cloud the issue of when the murder actually took place. In other words, to create an excuse exactly like the one Makoto just gave us. Why would Kyoko say that? Why would she want to make me look like the killer? No, I can't think about that right now. That tarp. If it was used the way Kyoko said, the tarp must have been touched to the body. What? But the body. Wait. Something's not right. And what might that be? Can't worry about Kyoko's motivation, so if I don't do something, everyone's gonna think I'm the killer. I have to refute what Kyoko said. Body before the explosion, I guess? By covering the body with the tarp, the killer prevented it from getting wet. So the reason the tarp was only dirty on one side is because the sprinkler got that side wet. But the underside of the tarp, it was totally spotless, right? It's because that side was protected from the water. Since it was facing down, of course it didn't get dirty. I uh, need to do that again. I wish I remembered what the blasting the noise button was. So the reason the tarp was because the yeah, I don't know. On computer, it's the other left, like the other click. Was protected from the water. Since it was facing down toward the, of course it didn't get dirty. You got that wrong. No, that's wrong. Actually, one side being clean is pretty strange if you think about it. 
because the blood wasn't dry before the body got blown up, right? Byakuya said it himself. Not to touch it, or you might get some on you. If you put a tarp on a body in that state, it absolutely would have gotten blood on it. Well, maybe the culprit washed it, so nobody would know they'd used it. If they had, they would have washed both sides. Just washing the one side wouldn't hide anything. Oh, yeah, true. More than that, what if the very blood we saw on the body was meant as a kind of camouflage? Huh? Blood was camouflage? We've already seen this once before in this game. What if, after the killer used the tarp to avoid the sprinklers, they then covered the body in blood that didn't belong to the victim? You mean someone else's blood? Where would they get something like that? I know! They could have grabbed some of the blood packs from the nurse's office! Hero actually got it right. Fumi did, right? When he pretended to be dead? No, that's not what happened this time. The killer got the blood from right there in the garden. Chicken, got it. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't just take blood packets from the nurse's office. It would have left less physical evidence, but pop off, I guess. I got it. Because it would have been a longer trip, I don't know. Also, it's more interesting this way. What? Chicken blood? When I checked the chicken coop before the murder, there were five chickens. But after the murder, there were only four. So, you're saying someone killed a chicken and then covered the body with its blood? Man, that's messed up. Killing a living thing just to do something like that is awful. They should have at least eaten it. Hard cut to all the corpses we've seen in this game and how Aoi is just secretly in this like, someone could have eaten it. I wonder if the killer had to get the blood from the scene so they wouldn't be spotted walking around. Anyway, there's no denying that a chicken went missing, which provides a basis for my theory. Perhaps, but even so, there's one thing that still doesn't make sense. You said the culprit used the tarp to avoid the water and then covered the body in blood, right? But if that's the case, then the blood should have soaked into the ground around the body. But that's not what we saw. Only the victim's clothing had blood on it. The ground was completely clean. I have to agree. That certainly is strange. Maybe they didn't apply the blood at the scene. Maybe they covered the coat in blood beforehand. They covered it beforehand? When you discovered the body, was it wearing the coat like you normally would? Um, I think so. No. Wait, no. The head was through the neck hole, but the arms weren't in the sleeves. It was also backward. Then that settles it. Sorry, I'm having a tough time keeping... What settles what? Here's what happened. The murder took place before the sprinklers went off. But the body didn't get wet because the killer covered it with the tarp. Then, later, at the same time the killer was gathering up the tarp, they pulled the coat over the body. The coat they'd already covered in blood. This series of cover-ups was meant to disguise the actual time the murder occurred. They wanted us to think the murder happened sometime after the sprinklers had gone off at 7.30. If that's actually what took place, it certainly becomes possible that the murder happened earlier. But to pull all that off, wouldn't they have had to go back to the garden after the sprinklers turned off? That actually wouldn't have been all that difficult. Huh? They already had the coat ready, so they just had to grab the tarp and pull the coat over the body. They'd be done in no time. Maybe. But still. Hina, after you met up with Makoto in the dining hall, did you two stay together from that point on? Oh, no. I headed off to the gym, and Makoto didn't show up till later. Then he had plenty of time to spare, wouldn't you say? <laughs> That's not... Don't bother saying it's not possible. <laughs> I must admit, Kyoko's reasoning is sound. Makoto's alibi is inadequate. He doesn't sound happy about that, though. Suspicion falls back on me again, but why? Why is Kyoko trying to attract I mean, me? Because everybody knows... Everybody knows Makoto's a basic ass little baby bitch that would never kill somebody. Yeah. In previous games, though, he would have jumped at the opportunity to blame me for something. I don't understand. Disguised dead bodies, man, to the truthful section of your handbook.
Um, one big thing about this entire thing. Mm. Why, like, this body could literally have just been hidden in the shed. This seems very complicated when the body could literally have been hidden in the shed. You could have drugged the body out, like, on a tarp, set it down, and then thrown the tarp back in there. Which very really could be because it's mud splatter, so that could be what that's from. Unless it's saying that it has to be the rainfall. Sprinkles. Sprinkles, yes. That. Fair, right? Well, I think if they drug the tarp on, like the body on the tarp, you would definitely see signs of that on the tarp. But the tarp is perfectly intact. It's just dirty on one side. My thing is that there, it absolutely could have happened before 10 p.m. last night if they did that and then threw the tarp on top of the body to cover it or anything like that. There's plenty of situations that this could have taken place. Well, I mean, no, the point is that it can't have taken place before 10 because Biakia... Unless it was in the whatever. shed. Well... That's... This yeah. thing falls apart when you start thinking about it in that case. Well then, it looks like we're back to square one. Makoto's alibi is no good, so once again, our suspects are him and Kyoko. For serious, man? Which one of them did it? Hey, why don't we let luck decide? Let's flip a coin. 50-50 Yo, luck? Let's let luck decide. <laughs> <laughs> Cassie, we are the ultimate lucky students, which also means we're the ultimate unlucky student. Anytime things go wrong, it's our problem. <laughs> no, but if we flip that coin and decided on luck, it totally land on Kyoko. It wouldn't. <laughs> We've been fucked oh, constantly boy. by luck. The only time I ever get lucky is when I'm playing the Mon Mon machine and get five of free ones in a row. I mean, everything that people say is unlucky to us has been lucky. Like, if our door didn't jam, we wouldn't have an excuse for why we weren't the killer. That it worked okay, out. Okay, no, us. it was very a lucky. hard cut to us being accepted in this academy. Yeah, that's also very lucky. Really? We could have lived yeah. a normal life. 